Sorry, didn't realise it was going to say that out loud. <laughs> But we are recording now. We're live and recording. <laughs> so hello, hello. Um, I don't know if anybody's even joined us tonight. I don't know. I'll just pretend like they have and then I won't get distracted if I keep looking at um, Facebook and um, seeing if anyone's put anything. Um, I'm Gemma. This is Laura from Tide Mums Coffee, as you know. And tonight we have got Katie with us from the Parenting Collective, which is a community Ooh. interest company. company. <laughs> <laughs> um from Greater Manchester. Now, some of you will probably recognise the name because it was you lot who all voted for the Greater Manchester Parenting Collective, as they were previously known, sorry Katie, not helping myself here, okay. to receive a percentage of our profits over the last six months. So we are now coming to the end of those six months, so we thought it would be really good to catch up with Katie and have a general chat about the Parenting Collective and what it is that they do, the future plans that they've got and um, how the profit donations can make a bit of a difference, hopefully. So welcome. Hello, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Very welcome. Um, <laughs> so should we kick off and just if you could tell us a bit about um, you and your journey into helping mums and a bit about what you do and, and why you do it, which is probably a big question, but we thought we'd start with that. It just helps set the scene. Yeah, <laughs> big <laughs> question. Yeah, big it's, question. It was an evolving process. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I guess it all started um, when, well, let's go right back. So I'm a midwife, that's my main job. Um, so I've obviously got a love for mums and babies and families and all that. So always had an interest in all things birth, babies, bonding, boobs, all of that. Um, and then obviously went on to have my own children. I've got three children. Um, I've got a nine-year-old, a six-year-old and a four-year-old. So I need the tired mum's coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I had my first baby, Joseph. Uh, he's nine. Um, and I think I'd got this warped sense of thinking that I was a midwife. I've read the textbooks. I know what to expect. But I got my baby home and I was like, oh, my God, what has happened? our world got turned upside down um and I really struggled and part of that I think I, I, I struggled I had postnatal depression but a big part of that I think was I'd put so much pressure on myself I was a midwife I should know what I was doing um I should be able to cope with all of this and it was horrible <laughs> those oh. first couple of weeks um and I did really struggle um I got help um I got better and I had a lot of family support around me which was great it was actually my mum that marched me off to the GP um which I needed because I wouldn't have ever gone myself no oh, good for you. um so yeah and then things kind of evolved from there so I started doing more started going to groups um I started I started baby wearing my grandparents had bought me a, a stretchy wrap I loved that and that for me sort of started healing some of the trauma I'll get emotional in a minute um so I found that really helpful and I loved it and things snowballed from there so um had two more babies after that wore them all loved slings and carriers, fell down a bit of a rabbit hole, wanted to do a bit more learning for myself and thought, you know what, actually this is going to be really useful from a work perspective because we always get asked about slings and carriers. Um, so I thought for my own learning, I'd seen uh, there was a baby wearing peer support course advertised. So I did that. Oh. You're frozen. And it was, uh -oh. <laughs> just a one day course. I thought, oh, this will be nice. I'll be able to use this in my revalidation. Oh, oh have I frozen? Hang on Am a I second. Back? Yeah. <gasps> you are. I think we only got to something about a course. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it froze me mid flow. <laughs> it really did. You're like a you robot for a little bit, but you're back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah I did a, a baby wearing peer support course and thought 
for my own learning and to be able to use it from a work perspective for continued professional development that kind of thing I thought oh yeah I'll do it and it was a day out and um and I think that really sort of changed the trajectory of my career really um so did that thought it would just be a one day thing um but then ended up from that volunteering um for our local sling library and doing uh, volunteering for a baby and dance um class that I was going to then I started teaching baby and dance um which is just amazing I must have I never ever heard of that until yeah <laughs> I mean I wore both babies and loved it but I would walk the dog but I've never yeah. thought of a dance class I know so I love to dance and that, that is not my background at all, um, but I love to dance and I'd been going to a class and the next thing I was approached to teach, so I did that and then I was still volunteering for the Sling Library and then it was becoming a community interest company and um, they asked me to come on board um, as a director so it's just snowballed from there and so now I'm a baby wearing consultant I've done some additional training um with Sling the Baby and so our Sling Library has now evolved as well so we started as um a Sling Library where parents could come with either their own sling or they could come to borrow one of our slings we teach them how to use it give them safety advice um, they'd come just for the social aspect some families you know couldn't afford to buy a sling so they would come and rent one instead um, so it started off like that and we would move the sling library around Greater Manchester and then we started doing um, a support group because it's really clear when you're working with parents it's really clear that there's a lot of trauma um, a lot of birth trauma a lot of um, worries and concerns you know infant feeding that kind of thing bonding um, so we started doing the cake for breakfast club that was four and a half years ago I think um, and we started doing that just as volunteers and, and what is that where they people come so the, to have cake they have cake there is cake lots of cake and now there is tired mum's coffee as well <laughs> <laughs> so it's a fourth trimester support group so we talk about this fourth trimester as being that period after your baby's born and um human babies when you compare them to other mammals human babies are born very early and we say early with the you know the, the mm. quotes um because that can come across as like that's a bad thing somehow we're at fault like it's a it's a wrong thing that we've done but it's a we've evolved our baby's heads are so big that they need to be born early because otherwise they wouldn't fit through the birth canal mm -hmm. so people think well why why is that happening surely that that's a negative thing but actually they think that's why um, our species have, has been so successful we've had we have this really long period of infancy when babies are really dependent on their caregiver for you know keeping them warm keeping them safe fed um, and we're a carrying species so it's a very natural thing um, to carry and keep your babies close it's a hard thing but it's a very natural thing to do um, but it can be really tricky and part of this fourth trimester group is sort of acknowledging that that baby is a little bit of a limpet <laughs> and they want to just be really close um and sort of talking about how we can cope with that and how that is normal newborn behavior even though it's really tricky to navigate and it's hard um but it is normal and it's just talking about that so we break the cake for breakfast club course into um normally five weeks um, so we talk about what is the fourth trimester we have a week about infant feeding we have a week about unpacking birth we do um, a mental health and well-being week and we have a, a safe uh, baby wearing 
week. So we have each week we, we that sounds come great. together. Yeah. It's really amazing. Great. It's been it's been really lovely. And it's evolved. It started small and we were volunteers. And then we've just had two years funding from the National Lottery, um, which has been wonderful. It's meant mm -hmm. we've had a much bigger reach. We've ran sessions all across Greater Manchester. So and I think that expectations on the fourth trimester as well. Mm -hmm. is quite, well, good. I mean, I I certainly would have benefited from something like that before mm -hmm. I had mine. I don't know about you, Law, but in terms of like, I think that was the biggest shock for me. I think I, I don't know. I don't know what I thought, to be honest, but I didn't expect it to be like it was. And then when you yeah. understand that a bit more and learn about that a bit more, you're like, ah, OK, that makes perfect sense. And then by the time the second came along and I was fully ready, yeah. to embrace <laughs> nothing but, you know, sitting on my ass and you being on me and that is great. You've yeah. got another one running around and you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember that really because I remember you know you, you get told that you need to have some sort of baby carrier on your list because you'll need it for going for a walk or whatever but I didn't appreciate the whole benefits about the bonding side of it yeah. but also for your, your mum's maternal mental health as well because it, it is nice you know if, if you know to sit down with your baby or whatever and do all of that stuff and have a minute <laughs> but, you, but in reality like Gemma said you've got stuff you need to do and Absolutely. you don't want to feel like you're stuck on your sofa so if there's a way that you can move about and do something whether it's go for a walk or poop around the house while you've got your baby who's content yeah. rather than screaming at you yeah it can't absolutely. be a bad thing but I didn't really think of it like that one before I became a mum it took me quite a long time <laughs> to realize it was more like yeah you're told you need it as a piece of kit rather than yeah all the benefits with it for you and the baby yeah and that it it's funny because you, you hear some people say oh you know we're always really trendy to baby wear and oh it's becoming much more popular and yeah. that's something it's something we're really passionate about is to talk about like this is not a new thing this has been going no. on since the dawn of time women and parents have carried their children and that's it's just part of our biology um and south america they have them in um the, yeah I, the slings around the front and then i saw when, well we were out there probably 10 15 years ago now but then and when they get a bit bigger they're kind of on their back with a different style of it so yeah. it's still you know it's yeah ingrained and has been forever more yeah yeah definitely so we that's something fancy we're crowns, happy I think. to keep talking about and yeah but it's it's prams that are new and these newfangled prams yeah. <laughs> so if we just i'm just conscious of our little what we were going to cover and i'm thinking in terms of thank you yeah. for being so honest by the way about your okay. um experiences i think that's that's really brave so thank you very much for that it's okay and so if we move on so obviously we're talking about some of the support that you provide mm -hmm. so in your sort of view of the world do you feel that there is enough of the right kind of support out there for mums absolutely not <laughs> no um so there are wonderful things happening and there's you know there is work being done but it needs to be so much more um and we've spoken about this haven't we that in the uk now women who are either pregnant or in the first year after they've had their baby um, women are more likely to kill themselves and die of suicide than any other um, reason during pregnancy and in that postnatal period. So that's just insane to me that that's happening yes. and that it, more isn't being done. There is great work being done, but it it needs more and it needs it needs at every level it you know women need better maternity leave and pay um it's the way our culture's set up you know do, do we support parents effectively I don't know whether we always do you know people might come and visit when you've had a new baby and they carry you know they want to cuddle that baby but that mum might not be eating anything all day and actually she might just need a, a brew and a hot meal and someone asking her if she's okay but I think our culture is very much like oh how's the baby first first question that people ask you know when I am privileged that I get to see these babies being born and I witness that first phone call that they make to their families and it is beautiful 
but a lot of the time the first questions are is it a boy or a girl how much do they weigh and is the baby okay <laughs> yeah. it's not like are you okay how are you feeling um and that I think is sad really I think a lot more work could be done on that level um and then yeah we need a lot more um in terms of mental health support for mums and well-being support um we want to be more proactive and provide things and obviously I'm biased because we do our our groups and our baby own dance classes but I do think they they're a really good proactive way of helping mum's mental health and well-being and um, just giving them a bit of time for them as well I often think these things that we do it's for them it's not for babies um yes there are so many benefits for the baby but we'll often say you know this is for you um and that you need that you need the community and I think you hit the nail on the head and we were kind of having a bit of a pre-catch up before when you said that it's an uncomfortable conversation. It is. Mm. And I think that's the massive bit to it. And I know mm. I sort of likened it to the whole menopause thing, which mm-hmm. isn't desperately related to this bit, but around how that's out there, isn't there? And obviously people are having lots and lots of conversations. And I witnessed a conversation at work a couple of weeks ago where um, somebody was opening up about their wife and then the other people were sort of talking about it. And um, somebody in the room went, wow, isn't this brilliant? Um, You know, two years ago, five years ago, we wouldn't have even been acknowledging it or talking about it. But now it's that thing. And uh, and kind of how we were saying like with this, but this is another kind of conversation that needs to be out there and we might not get the conversations right or we might ask the wrong questions or it might not be you know we're not going to get it right every time but actually Mm. it's just about having that conversation and putting that awareness yeah because it's such an important thing Mm. yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah it's breaking down breaking down that stigma and uh, it's it's really it's really tricky and you know from my point of view there was there was shame there i'm much happier to talk about it now but there was a lot of shame and guilt there and I think that's really difficult for mums but it we have to we have to talk about it we um because if we don't it just gets pushed down and women feel really really isolated and it spirals and it's not gonna it's not gonna end well then I mean, motherhood's such a paradox anyway, isn't it? And there's lots of sort of confusing and conflicting emotions. Mm. And I think everybody has a tendency to sort of hold it together rather Mm. than let the inside show. And it's funny, you were just talking about things then. I was just thinking back to, um, obviously, when I had my first and people, everyone came around, they were great, really supportive. And people did um, hold the baby for me, which was wonderful because I was struggling in terms of, of course, she cried all the time, especially for the first two and a half weeks. She's like an angry wasp, I think the midwife called her. Um, (laughs) And she really was. And I thought, you know, oh, thank goodness for that. But then looking back, that wasn't really, not that it was the right thing to do. That sounds terrible. But um, actually, it's kind of about what I perhaps should have been doing, not mm. not that. And then you feel guilty about that. And then it's just, I don't know, you feel like you can't do right for doing wrong, can you? I know. Anyway. Yeah. The mum guilt is just <laughs> on another level. I've never known anything be like so de- divisive divisive is that the right word but um you know we talk about like how we feed our babies how we birth our babies and if you, you feel like you can't do right sometimes and you've just got to do you've got to do you haven't you and yeah um find your own groove and if as long as you're happy with that going with it obviously if something's not going to plan and you're not happy it's we need to make sure that support's in place but yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a difficult one. I've totally lost my train of thought. Then what was no, I saying? <laughs> I think you were heading down the route about the. It is divisive, like you said. And oh, it's yeah. we were saying about generations almost clashing, and not clashing as well. And the feeling of guilt, and you you only know what you know at the time. Mm. And I've realised as time's gone on, yeah, you know, my eldest is almost ten. You just find new things to feel guilty about. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> a few people have said that to us. Yeah, it definitely doesn't get any easier. It becomes no. a new challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just I, you, you just reminded me as well as you were talking then, and and it hit every time we speak to somebody, it just makes me think. And I don't know how we fix it. We probably can't on our own, but 
it's just mm-hmm. such a postcode lottery, isn't it, about what's mm-hmm. available. And even when things are available, whether you can find out about them or not. So there might yeah. be things that you can find out through your health visitor or family information services or friends. But finding out about it is not always that easy, is it? Sometimes mm-hmm. it's luck if you stumble across it. And then like the sling library stuff and things that you do up in your area, that's great that you've done that and you had you mm-hmm. found a purpose and a why and you went out of your way and in your own time set all that up and it's bringing brilliant benefits. But probably most places across the country don't have access to that, do they? And that's the, that's no. the challenge probably is working around the wellbeing and the mental health stuff because we know about the mental health funding challenges across the country from an NHS perspective. Mm. But then on a wellbeing side of it as well, isn't it? When you throw mum guilt into that as well and juggling everything, it's no yeah. wonder, is it, that it's very hard to 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 kind of get that right support and look after yourself. And mm. I, I definitely don't have the answers, but every time we speak to people... It, it, you get that same sort of message don't you about what a lottery it is and mm. what networks you've got around you and so on and it's a bit scary yeah. isn't it for people who are maybe in a more rural area uh, for example you know they're going to probably find it harder aren't they to, to mm. and, and probably feel more isolated um and that's scary for me when I think about mm. it too much yeah definitely yeah I think sling library wise it's it's getting better and there's yeah they're, they're they're growing and their yeah. new ones are popping up all the time. They're up and down the country, but yeah, it, I, you're right. It is it, everything just needs more, doesn't it? And yeah, more money. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, I, mean, I suppose at least we're all we're all there's so many of us, aren't there? We kind of see where the gaps are and trying to do our bit, and hopefully we're we're all helping yeah. in a way. But like you said, there's always a lot more we we feel like we could be doing, or the country could yeah. be doing all, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us? Um, can you tell us about some of your future plans? I can. <laughs> so we've got some very exciting plans. So um, we've got lots of plans, but one of the ones I can definitely tell you about <laughs> is that we've been approached by the um, mother and baby unit at Withinshaw Hospital. Uh, so that's one of our hospitals in uh, Greater Manchester. Um, and it's one of the only mother and baby units in our region. Um, they've approached us and asked if we can bring our services into the unit. So our Cake for Breakfast Club sessions, and so that's our uh, support group, and our baby wearing dance classes. Uh, so these are uh, going to be for women in, in the uh, unit, and it's an inpatient mental health unit where mum and baby can stay together um so it's maintaining that attachment and that bond for those that mum and baby and mum can get the help she needs um so the women that are on the unit are either um struggling with just really severe postnatal depression um postnatal psychosis um, or an exacerbation of their pre-existing mental health um, issues, so uh, bipolar disorder, uh, things like that. Um, so they get all the support they need for their mental health. There's a, a midwife um, attached to there. Um, there's, I think they said there's a nursery there. There's like it's homely, so there's a little like flat environment. Um, and That's yeah, so and they asked us to come and do these sessions. So we've um, launched a crowdfunding campaign because they, they they approached us and they've asked us and they said, you know, we've seen what you're doing and we'd really like to bring this to our unit and we think it could be a benefit. And we've gone, absolutely, yes, we want to do this. Because all of us at the Parenting Collective, we've all at some point struggled with our own mental health. So it's massively close to home, close to our hearts. We want to do something. Um, so they asked us whether we could bring these services in, but unfortunately there was there's no funding. <laughs> so we've launched a crowdfunding campaign and we only launched it last week. And our aim is to get two and a half thousand and we're already at the £500 mark, which we're really pleased about. And we're going to be doing some more fundraising over the next couple of months. Um, and hopefully the money from you guys is going to contribute to that so it's going to help us buy um new slings um for the families there it'll help um 
buy cake for the cake for breakfast club because there's got to be cake <laughs> and coffee um and it'll also uh, mean that we can pay our facilitators and our instructors uh, for their time and travel and things like mm-hmm. that because yeah otherwise these things become really unsustainable to do and what a great so, unit yeah. like what yeah I just uh, yeah wow I just think brilliant if if all mums that needed access to things could do that and go with their baby yeah, yeah. Be, um, it, we're really lucky that we've got that on our doorstep and there isn't one in every area so women do come from all over I think to that I imagine they're heavily subscribe but over yeah. yeah um so I can't remember off the top of my head I can't remember whether it's a something like 12 or is it's only in the teens uh, number of beds available on that unit so um unfortunately you know if there are no spaces uh, those women end up facing that decision of being separated from their baby um and we said before didn't we either staying at home make you know being with baby still but staying at home possibly at the detriment to the mental health or being in an inpatient setting getting the support that they probably need but that their baby has to stay at home and that affects bonding and it affects the whole family really and going forward you know we talk a lot about um building a healthy and happy brain and a lot of that is you know building that connection and that um responsiveness and um what do they call it Re- reciprocity it's like getting it's like that serve and yeah. return you know and you keeping mom and baby together is key to that um so having a unit where they can stay together is brilliant and mm. hopefully we can take our service in and it's going to be a hopefully a really good boost for them and a lovely well-being thing and actually um, for being mums ourselves I think we all know that if it was the choice of staying at home or being separated yeah. probably most of all of us would choose not to be separated and stay yeah. at home and that's actually a real risk factor isn't Absolutely. it really scary mm. yeah yeah it is it's um and you know we spoke about that before didn't we we know what the consequences are for that you know the unfortunately we we have got women that are committing suicide they're killing themselves because they can't see a way out and that's just horrendous yeah. um so yeah absolutely so doing what, that's our why and yeah, yeah. We, yeah we, we absolutely love to support that i think that would be yeah really absolutely. nice thing to do absolutely. A massive thing i really hope you get there quickly thank you yeah, <laughs> and I, crowdfunding yeah, we'll link in somewhere. It's yeah, and on our socials, the link in bio and all that. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. Any, anybody who's bought our coffee over the last five or six months, um, you'll know that some of that money has gone towards this project. So yeah, hopefully it's. I know it's not. We'd love to be able to donate a lot more, but hopefully it's just something, isn't it, that that helps a little bit. <laughs> We're really grateful for anything anyone can give us. <laughs> Yeah, check oh. out the crowdfunding page, everyone, because it's yeah, a brilliant project. No, it is. I I think what you're doing is absolutely brilliant. I'm so glad people put you on our radar and um, that we get to contribute to a project like that. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And I really hope if anybody did ever watch this, it's in charge of commissioning beds or units or anything yeah. like that. I know. <laughs> It'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Right then, we've got some slightly more fun questions. So I end up with um, not that they weren't fun, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> comes on our virtual chats. Two things at the end of it. So, firstly, what's your favourite thing about being a mum? And then, secondly, um, what's your top tip for surviving motherhood? Oh, I didn't get that far in my list of. Uh, oh, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> but you <laughs> oh, so my favourite thing. <laughs> Um, I think it's sort of seeing their personalities <laughs> as they're growing up. We, um, that my husband's sat here. They're funny, aren't they? <laughs> Our kids are really funny, and they have us in stitches. They're all they're all quite different, um, but they do have us in absolute stitches. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably my favourite thing. It's seeing their little personalities come through, and when they do just 
Oh. Things. <laughs> I quite like that too, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then what and was then, the other thing? What's my top what's your tip? top tip for surviving with it? Can be anything. Oh. I've got to say slings, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I gen genuinely don't know how I would have parented and coped without slings and carriers that they got me through. And that I am I allowed? Am I allowed to swear? Oh yeah, like we say, we just get shit done. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I do put on YouTube that's for adults, not oh, kids. So hopefully that yeah. counts as well, something. That. <laughs> no, it, you know. Obviously, the bonding is brilliant, and the feeling of having your baby in the sling is just wonderful, and it. You know, even when we practice with dolls, you still get that like rush of oxytocin and it still feels really nice having the doll in the sling. You see, so I put a fox in one in a shop to try it, a cuddly fox. It was an absolute disaster. It made me terrified about what's going to happen when a human goes in. I thought you meant a real fox. Oh no, <laughs> like a stuffed one. Sorry. <laughs> Just casually, I put a fox in one once. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear yeah we practice with the dolls all the time and that it, it does feel really nice um so yeah obviously the benefits are really good and there's lots of evidence and all that but practically getting shit done and especially when you've got multiple children our eliza our middle one was a runner <laughs> She um, she was only 21 months when our youngest was born and she suddenly hated the stroller, like absolutely not, she was not going in. Um, so often I'd be, I'd got Benjamin in the sling, I was pushing an empty stroller and she'd be running. But at least I had another hand that I could try and yeah. wrangle her with. Um, I actually ended up baby wearing them both um I'd have her on my back and I'd have Benjamin on my front and that's how we did the school run for a long time um and I had another hand free then for the the book bag and yeah. my, my eldest hand and um so yeah I don't know how I would have survived parenthood without slings and carriers and and then the community that that brought as well that's that was lovely that was a happy bonus <laughs> Aww. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> it's been really great talking to you and working with you over the past. Thank few you. Months. I feel the need to um, like caveat all this it, that I've not done this all on my own. That there's four of us that um, run the parenting collective, but they couldn't be here. They couldn't join us tonight. But um, I, I, have to, I feel like I have to say that it's not just me and that they're there, and it's a it's a good little team we've got going then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You all do amazing work. Absolutely you amazing. You Thank so you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Is there anything that you want anybody to do, apart from the crowdfunding, obviously, send you some for a few pounds? <laughs> um, is there any other call to action you'd like to make to anybody possibly watching? Um, so if you can, if you can head over to our social pages, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on TikTok as well. Um, so yeah, if you can head over and follow um, our pages and like and share them and comment and interact with them because then the algorithm does its thing and it shows it to more people and we can spread the word. Um, and if people can, we know times are tough at the moment and money is you know tight for a lot of families, but if you can, We'd love uh, for everyone to um, pledge some money on our crowdfunding page. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, the same goes for us, really. If you'd like to go and follow our socials, uh, look at the website, there's blogs on there, there's all sorts of things. Um, obviously, if you buy coffee, that's great. The more coffee you buy, the more money we can give to um, great causes like this. Um, so, yeah. I think that's it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Brilliant. That was fun. Oh, yeah, it was really nice. We always like talking to you. Definitely. <laughs> oh, what about your um, what about your TikTok? Because you didn't mention that. I love your TikTok. Oh. <laughs> I've, it's my guilty pleasure. So we we have a, a a sling library. We have a parenting collective TikTok, but then I have a TikTok as well. 
um so matt if you want to go follow me on tiktok you can so it's uh yeah, Kate it Casey, smile, the dancing yeah. midwife <laughs> and i do daft dances and yeah <laughs> i get the ladies in class doing daft dances and baby wearing tutorials and sometimes it's just to me talking about work and <laughs> Yeah, and people seem to like it. People are following me, and I, yeah, yeah, very popular on TikTok. Of, yeah, <laughs> definitely keep mm. following you. <laughs> oh, thank yeah, thank you so much for your time. No, thank you, and thanks for doing what you're doing and sending us some money. It's much appreciated, and the coffee was great as well. So thanks for that. I'm sure we'll probably slip <laughs> another few bags your way to cope with the uh, impatient thing. Thank you. Yeah, that you definitely. <laughs> Speak to you all soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.